Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We're getting closer, saints. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Saints, let us just prepare our hearts and ourselves, our entire being, just to experience God. Just to experience God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. The time of backsliding and stepping out and breaks, those time long gone. We're ahead of time now. We have but a small window now, saints. We have but a small window. Let us just trust God with our life. Let the fellowship be real. Let the fellowship be real. We are seeing where he's teaching us how to fellowship with him, what we need. He has exposed his image to us and the faith. Nowhere and the faith and what we are seeing, what the faith really means. And all he wants is, is, is relationship. That's all what God wants from us. And he's just settling us into him. You know, he wants relationship. Let us just have a relationship. A person. Let's personalize it to the Lord and Savior this morning, saying, Hallelujah. Father, we thank you again. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word? Hallelujah, Lord. Can you please stand where we will of our apostle, our mother. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. She, she wears so many caps. We are thanking God this morning for her mothering us home to glory. She's showing us the right path. She's showing us truth. Right? And because of that, we are just blessed this morning to have her. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. We love him today. Do we love him today? Yes. Hallelujah. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this 
greatest joy that I had. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I had, you know, the world didn't give it to me. You know, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Come on, church. This joy that I have, oh, Lord. the world didn't give it to me.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good workout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
saints, it's just good to be saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I'm so happy. I am so happy that I'm saved. I'm happy that I know the Lord. I'm just happy. I am so happy because I've seen the glory of God. I've seen the glory of God. Amen. I've seen God perform the things that he has taught me. I've seen him perform them. Amen. And when, when, the, when the enemy comes in as a flood, the spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to rejoice. You ought to rejoice because when the, the devil thought he had you. Come on, I said when the devil thought he had you. Glory to God. And you thought you were down and out. The Lord stepped in and rescued us out of our own mess. Come on, somebody. It wasn't something somebody else did. He got us out of our own mess. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I watched God turn mess into a message. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to glorify him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm happy this morning. And I worship him from my soul, my spirit. Worships the Lord. Amen. I worship him. Glory to God because he is worthy of all the praise we can give him. He is so worthy. Glory to God. Amen. I'm happy this morning. And when I get happy, I weep before the Lord. I just weep before him. I worship him. Glory to God when I'm happy. Glory to God. I start to weep. I weep more when I'm happy than I do when I'm sad. Hallelujah. When there's something going on, glory to God, I don't have time to cry. It's time to praise him. Amen. It's time to praise God when when all hell break loose in your house, praise God. Just praise him. You, sometimes you don't even know what to pray. So just praise. Just praise him, glory to God. And God said, I'll come, I come down and I inhabit the praises of my people. Glory to God. So just praise him. Glory to God. Even when you don't feel like it, praise him. When things don't look good, praise him. Just give him a praise. Hallelujah, and I guarantee God will come and see about you. If you praise him out of a pure heart, glory to God, God will come down and see what's going on in your life. Hallelujah, yes, he will. Hallelujah, I, I'm, I'm just happy this morning, saints. I'm happy because I know him, and he has, he has done in my life what he, what he promised to do. And I have seen his, his word manifested. I've seen it manifested. That's, that's why I'm so happy this morning. You know, hallelujah, when the devil does all he can do, he still haven't done enough to stop God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't care what the devil does, he can't stop God from doing what he does. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord said, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Come on, somebody. I'll set the table, and I'll let you eat right in the presence of your enemies, and there's nothing they can do about it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will put a hedge of protection around you, and the devil can't touch it. Hallelujah. And let you sit down and eat in comfort. Amen. In the presence of your enemies. Saints, I live that. I've lived it year after year. I've lived it. So I can preach that. I can preach that. That if you be faithful to God, I don't care what's going on. God will set a table before you. He'll spread it for you. Glory to God. He'll be the waiter. He'll serve you. And let you relax in the presence of your enemies. He'll let your enemies see him bless you. Do you hear what I'm saying? He'll let your enemies see that he is God. 
that you serve a true and living God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, saints, as the preacher said, this is not a time for trying to figure out whether you're going to be holy or not. Amen. This is the wrong time for that. Glory to God. This is a time to be holy. Just be holy. Love God with every fiber of your being, with everything that's in you. Love the Lord. Amen. I'm happy this morning because he real. I say he's real. Glory to God. God is real. Amen. I want us to, uh, I want to go into, hallelujah, a lesson. Remember now, this we're, we're discipling this, uh, we're piecemealing this word from the school of the prophet. We're piecemealing it every week into our spirits. We want to make sure that we go back over everything that God told us in the school of the prophets. Is, is, isn't that right? Amen. So that you will know and understand. So if it sounds redundant, amen, it's good. Redundancy is good. It, allow, it helps us to retain. Amen. Because sometimes in redundancy you hear things that you thought you knew. But you get more clarity. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We're in uh, chapter 3 of the study guide. I think it was uh, um, by faith and through faith. That's where I want to go today. By faith and through faith. Amen. I want to go back through that. Take your notes inside of your study guide. Those of you that don't have a study guide, and those of you who are watching by way of television or Roku or what, however you're watching this or online, amen, you can get this study guide, um, Faith of the New Creature, Image of God, subtitled Faith of the New Creature, from our School of the Prophets 2015 from the Mirror Banks Faith Library. I trust my technicians to put, to put the information up on the screen. Please let it scroll across the screen so people will know how to get this study guide. Because it's so important, this, this word that God gave us uh, from the School of the Prophets is so important. All the way from World Conference 2014 up until School of the Prophets 2015, God has been piecemealing this word to us. He's been breaking it down to where we can really understand it. Isn't that right? Bless the Lord. So we want to continue, amen, every, every session, every time we come together, we want to talk about what's in this, these books, amen, from World Conference to School of the Prophets 2015, amen. And uh, uh, we want to make sure that our television audience knows where they can get this material, please, from the Mary Banks Faith Library. Uh, MaryBanksFaithLibrary.com, amen, is where you'll find it. Bless the Lord, and, you, and soon you'll see it up on the screen, amen? Um, chapter 3 talks about by faith and through faith. Now, that scripture comes from Romans 3, 29 and 30. That's where we're going to start, Romans 3, 29 and 30. Amen. We're going to The 29th verse reads Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he the God of the Jews only? That's Romans 3:29 and 30. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Listen to Paul. Listen to Paul. And some people may have this, um, you may not understand uh, the book of Romans. The book of Romans was written to the church at Rome, but the majority of the members of that church were Jews, strangely enough. Most of the members of the church at Rome were Jews. It uh, started out to be, when that church first started, was mostly Jews. And um, so now you got a mixture of Jews and Gentiles in the Church of Christ. So Paul had to address those issues. Seeing it is one God which shall justify, 
the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. He will justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. This, this scripture establishes two operations of faith, by faith and through faith. Have you, you've heard this before? By faith and through faith? You've ever read that? You ever wondered what it really meant? What was the difference between the two? By faith and through faith? Glory to God. It must first be established that there's a difference between the faith of the old covenant and the new. Right? We got to first establish that. I want you to note something that in the old covenant, I want, you to, I want you to take note of the fact that in the old covenant, we never see any teaching on faith. Never see any teaching on faith. What we have is two scriptures, Deuteronomy 32, 19, 21, and Habakkuk 2, 3, and 4, which are prophecies that talk about the just shall live by faith and that Israel will be provoked by our people uh, who are not a people because Israel became a people of no faith, that had no faith. Now let's let's see what this how this relates to the church today. Galatians three and twenty two, I believe, explains these two operations of faith. The twenty second verse, Galatians three and twenty two. I'm gonna turn the reader. Galatians 3, 22. But the scripture hath concluded all on the sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. All right. We're going to get into this more uh, in more details later, but I just want to make the point today of the difference between by faith and through faith. Amen. Glory to God. The promise... was that the faith of Jesus Christ would be given to them that believe. That was the promise. Mm -hmm. And notice what it said. It said, but the scripture concluded all of us under sin so that. So what is it saying? It's saying everybody was, was uh, sin, in sin. Every, uh, after Adam, everyone was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Isn't that right? Glory to God. So God said, I don't know anyone that's just. I don't know anyone that's perfect. I don't know anyone that is without sin. Are you working with me? The whole human race was um, cast as sinners. So that the promise that God made to Abraham by faith of Jesus Christ. Now notice what this says that this promise was going to be given by the faith of Jesus Christ. The faith of Jesus Christ, or by the faith of Jesus Christ, the promise would be given. Amen? But it was going to be given to those who believed. Why doesn't it say those who have faith? I want us to understand something here, and that is that faith, is not defined by God the way Webster defines it for us. Are you, are you hearing me? Amen? Faith is not defined by God the way Webster defines it for us. Human faith can only go so far as belief. We're going to be doing this in discipleship. We're going to get, it, get in, in, in more details in it. But human faith can only be defined as belief. But, from, but faith from God's perspective means a lot more than belief. And so this scripture now, and we'll talk about that later, but this scripture now declares that 
those who believe shall receive faith. Do you see this? Those who believe shall receive the faith of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Are you hearing? Yeah. Amen. So that tells us something. That tells us that there's a difference between faith and belief from God's perspective. Because you had to believe in order to receive faith. Let me, let's make it even clearer. Let's look in, um, was Romans 12? God has dealt every, to every man the measure of faith. Is that Romans 12 chapter, right? For the, I think it starts out that a man should not think more highly of himself than he ought. Huh? What's the verse? All you scholars. Hmm? Verse 3, Romans 12 and 3, what does it say? For I say, mm -hmm. through the grace given unto me, mm -hmm. to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, uh -huh. but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Do we see that? God gave every man the measure of faith. Now, what, who, who, um, who is he talking about here? He's talking about the church. He's talking about the church. Those who are in the church have received a measure of faith. Are you hearing God? Those who are in the church have received a measure of faith. The scripture goes on to say uh, in another uh, passage that, that we have received the measure of Christ, a measure of Christ. I believe that's Corinthians, that we've re received, the, uh, that we prophesy according to the measure of Christ that we've received. Are you hearing God? So that measure of faith, what did we receive from God? We only receive one spirit. Is that right? We only receive one spirit. So everything that we got from God came in that spirit. If, we, if, we, if, if someone says they receive Christ, if someone says they receive grace, hello, if someone says they receive uh, redemption, glory to God. If someone says they receive Jesus, if someone says they receive God, they all received it in the Holy Ghost. Isn't that right? We only got one thing out of heaven, and that was the Holy Ghost. Are you working with me? Amen. So that measure, that measure of Christ is in the Holy Ghost. Are you working with me? Glory to God. And so what this scripture tells us, what Romans tells us, and also um, Galatians, what, it, what it's telling us that the measure that we have received came from God. God gave it to us. And now Paul says to the church at Galata that this uh, measure was given to those who believe. Those who believe. So in order to come to God, look at the, look at the old patriarchs. In order for them to um, receive, they had to believe. Are you working with me? Now, let me explain something to you. Amen. Watch this. This scripture that we just read in Galatians 3.22, I want you to follow me here. This scripture that we just read in Galatians 3.22, read it again. Galatians 3.22, but, mm -hmm. but the scripture hath concluded all on the sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. That, that it might be given to whom? Them that believe. Okay, now I want you to read um, Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrew, uh, the 12th chapter, let's see, 11th chapter. And uh, right around the last, just about the last, the last uh, verse, just just before the last verse, these all died. Hebrews eleven thirty nine, mm -hmm. and all and these all, having obtained a good report uh -huh. through faith, received not the promise. They now all of these people, that were, all of these people that were in the hall of faith, we call it, Hebrews 11. By faith, Moses did this. By faith, glory to God, uh, Samson did that. 
and by faith, Enoch, by faith, by faith, by faith. But then it goes on to say, these all died, huh? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> having not received the promise. The promise was the spirit, mm -hmm. right? The promise was the spirit. And these all died not having received the spirit. They didn't receive the spirit of God, right? But they went in the grave doing what? Believing. Mm -hmm. They went in the grave believing. That's as much as humanity can do Amen. is believe. That's what I need you to understand. That's as much as humanity can do is believe. That's all a human being can do is believe. Now, but there's a stipulation on that. There's some conditions. When we look at the old patriarchs, we look at the fact that these people that are listed in, in Hebrews 11, it talks about their great exploits. They did this. Moses re refused to, to be this uh, Pharaoh's... Um, uh, daughter's son, glory to God. He refused to live in the palace. He went out to live with his own people, glory to God, denying the pleasures of Egypt to suffer with his own. And then we see Abraham offering up Isaac. Amen? Amen. Now, what I want you to see is this. When we go to the Old Covenant, when we go to the Old Covenant from, from Genesis all the way up to Matthew, when we look at the old, uh, Genesis to Malachi, we look at the Old Covenant, we see that God visited these people with a word. But what did he do? God formed a track record in their lives. He made himself, gave him, made himself a track record with Abraham. He didn't just, just come to Abraham in the beginning and say, Abraham, offer of Isaac. Well, there was no Isaac. But he didn't just say, you know, go and, and, and get um, your wife and offer her up or get your father and offer him up. No, 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 no. Abraham was not familiar with God. He was not familiar with God. Abraham's father and all those people around him worshipped idols. In fact, the Chaldeans really worshipped Apollo, the, the, the sun god. They, they, they worshipped um, the, the god of the sun, the sun god. And uh, so they, they were idol worshipers. Now, so for God now to come to him and, 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 and uh, expect something for him, from him, God had to form a track record mm -hmm. in his life. Are you hearing me? Amen. So God first told him, get up and leave your homeland. Go to a place, you know, I'll let you know where you're going later. Just go, just go. Now, <clears throat> okay, he says, I'll let you know, you just go. And so what did he do? Abraham got up and he left and he went and he obeyed God. He obeyed him. He left, right? Why would he do that? First of all, they were idol worshipers. But here now he hears the voice of a living God. Because these idols couldn't talk. They couldn't talk, they couldn't move, they couldn't do anything. But now God speaks to Abraham. He speaks to him. A living God speaks to him. And Abraham is moved to obey this God. He obeyed him. He did what God told him to do. And there were many things that God told Abraham to do, and Abraham did it. There were some things that, that you know, God didn't, didn't tell him to go down into uh, Egypt when the, when the famine came, but he went anyhow. But even after he got down there, he, he, when uh, Sarah was arrested, he cried out to God. He didn't look for no idol. He cried out to God. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And God delivered Sarah to him. So what was God doing? Establishing a trite record. Amen. Establishing a trite record. Now, when God established a trite record, it became now unrighteous for Abraham to disobey him. Are you understanding? That's with anyone. In the Old Covenant, if, if once God has established a trite record in your life, it's, it's unrighteous for you to disobey him. 
Now, from God's perspective, this is how God saw this. When they obeyed, if, see, it's one thing to believe, but it's another thing to believe and do. And as far as God is concerned, you have not believed until you do. Are you working with me? See, if, as, as far as God is concerned, belief is obedience. If you believe me, you'll obey me. It's just like he said, if you love me, you'll obey me. If you believe God, you'll obey him. If you don't obey God, God said, you don't believe me. You don't believe me. Now, if you want to get on the wrong side of God, just don't believe him. Just don't believe him. God loves it when his people believe him. He loves it when his people believe him. He gets excited when we believe him. Glory to God. He gets, you know, he gets, he just, he, you know how you stick your chest out and just all proud of yourself because you got some folks that believe you. Amen. That's how God get when we believe him. So God is saying now, if you believe me, you'll obey me. So these people in the old covenant, their faith was tried by the things that God told them to do. Are you hearing me? The things that God told them to do, they did it. They did it. They obeyed. And because they obeyed, it was accounted to them as righteous. Are you working with me? It didn't make them perfect, but God now covered their other sins because in the thing that he told them to do, they did it. Are, are you working with me? Glory to God. So as far as God was concerned, when you obey, that's the evidence of your belief. When you obey, that's the evidence of your belief. Now, when the old patriarchs come all the way down to, to Matthew with the coming of Christ, and Jesus now declares that he's the way to God. He's the way to God. He's the way to God. Who did he preach to? He preached to the Jews, didn't he? The Bible says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Is that right? Yeah. Jesus didn't come preaching to the Gentiles. He preached to the Jews. Now, when he preached to the Jews and he said, I am the way. I was sent by God. I was sent by God. But he's talking to a people that already belong to God. Are, are you hearing? Are you hearing? He was talking to a people that already belonged to God, people that were familiar with the oracles of God, people that had the Torah, that understood, the, you know, God. They understood, they, they knew that there was a God, they worshipped 